Hello everyone and welcome to the Winning Agendas coverage of the International Twilight Struggle League 2020-21. My name's Jesse Marshall and I'm here with a game against Ryan. Hiker Ryan, as they are known. On play deck. So here we go. Good luck to our opponents. And hoping to get our first win of the season on the board. I think for those of you who are watching along on my stream yesterday, I may have um, given you the incorrect time. I may have said 11 a.m. Australian time. So hopefully we don't have too many people turning up in an hour. But anyway, people who are following the channel should get the go live notification anyway. Um, so we'll go with a pretty standard setup here. We've got three four ups, which is powerful. Um, we don't have defectors. We've also got, so we've got three four ups and three one ups. So we have to be a little bit careful um, with how we use our ops here. Um, we've also got CIA created. We've also got US Japan Pact, which we probably want to play towards the end of the turn. The question more is, um, so we'll go ahead and confirm the normal setup because there's nothing sort of strange we want to be doing here. I mean, there really is as the USSR. Um, but just in terms of thinking about playing this hand, it kind of would be good to get one of these one-ups out of the way in the headline phase. So we might actually look to hold Red Scare for turn two. We care less about NASA getting defectors. Um, I'm more happy to play this in an action round, I think, um, because NASA is also most important for if they headline Middle East scoring, although it looks like they're not going to headline Middle East scoring. So I'm probably going to coup Italy. I think they've probably got defectors, so I'm going to headline NASA. Yeah. This setup indicated to me defectors because it's far too risky to leave without defectors to leave Italy with three, uh, unless they had socialist governments, but even then I think it's it's pretty risky. And um, we're going to go ahead and coup. Uh, I think we will coup Italy anyway. Um... Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We've got the powerful enough coup cards to pull it off, so might as well go for it. And it did come off, which means that we may actually play this red scare during the turn to take France potentially, but we'll see how we go. I dare say that will move into France here, in which case if they do... Um, Having lost Nasser, it does make it a little harder to get into Egypt and Libya. So we might look to try and solidify Asia, especially since we're going to be giving them Japan. Uh, we might even take South Korea with US-Japan Pact. So they coup back in Iraq. Um, well, I think we kind of just have to take France here now that it's on offer. I mean... They might have Middle East scoring, but we can even just go one, two, three, four if we want to. I mean, we're under no threat from CIA at the moment. Like, I do want to get rid of CIA shortly, but we'll keep this. And in fact, they have no way to degrade DEFCON anyway at the moment. The, the only thing they could do is to event Fidel and then coup Cuba, thinking that we have CIA, which would be an extremely strange play in the circumstances. Or coup. Oh, they can't coup North Korea. Yeah. I think that there are very limited opportunities for us to get killed by CIA here. And I don't mean killed this turn, because it's very difficult to get killed this turn when we have the China card, but um, I mean punished for not playing it in that action round, I guess. Um, so we probably want to take a non-battleground in Europe at some point shortly. And then, yeah, we'll consider taking um, South Korea with US Japan Pact. I guess they could duck, they could have invented duck and cover to reduce duck hunt. Um, so it looks like they've probably got Middle East scoring. So I think we'll just use CIA to move into Afghanistan. Probably give them those VPs. Moving to Afghanistan. 
we can take um, Af- potentially take Afghanistan and Pakistan <clears throat> with containment and we can take South Korea with US Japan pact and then event captured Nazi scientists. I mean, it's a bit of awkward sequencing, but I think keeping on going is good. Uh, and we probably want to take a, oh, what are we going to hold here? Maybe we'll hold CNS for headline next turn because we didn't hold um, Red Scare Purge because we used it to take France. <clears throat> so let's trigger this. So we'll probably use this to go into Afghanistan. <clears throat> use formation resolution to take Spain, Portugal. Um, then use US Japan Pact to take South Korea. And then hopefully, I mean, the chances of them still not having gone into Afghanistan and Pakistan at that point are pretty low. Oh, still having not gone into Pakistan, I should say, is pretty low, but... Um, I think at that point we'll play containment into Pakistan if it's still open. Pardon me. Okay, they moved into Afghanistan. Interesting. I mean, we're going to do the same, but that is intriguing. I guess it makes some sense. It denies us that, and it's a country that's worth a BP. It denies us the capacity to fill up Afghanistan quite as easily. So we've still got a potential coup on um, Iran or Panama as well. Oh, Warsaw Pact's interesting. Just joined What the Hell Happened in Europe. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so one, two, I think is all we need. And then we might go three, four, because we've got the potential for some realignment shenanigans there. Uh, and then five in Poland, I think. Um, what the hell happened in Europe? We rolled well on our coup in Italy and then they didn't respond in France. So we took France. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of things now. I mean, jamming to Russia and South Korea is probably not as necessary. So we can coup Iran or Panama, but our ops are not great for doing that now. Um, so we might just take Austria um, and put one into Pakistan just so we've got the access to India so it's difficult for them to close us off. And this, I mean, hopefully incentivizes them to do something in Europe, but they may just completely ignore it. So then our last two action rounds are US Japan packed somewhere. So at the moment we could consider going um, Pakistan, India. Obviously if they have the war, it's not great, but at least they're both five pluses at that point. Um, or we could just take South Korea and play it a little safer. So they go Comic-Con. So we kind of wasted an influence there, unfortunately. So now unlikely we're gonna take India. Uh, but let's just one, two, three, four. Um, we can also coup Lebanon still at this point to get rid of their Middle East domination. It's something we can think about, but we can also leave. Yeah, I hope I get to realign West Germany as well. Um, <laughs> that's my <laughs> secret hope for this game, or not so secret, probably. Um, It's an interesting one. Like, we're, we're far ahead in Europe, but we can't let things get out of hand across the rest of the world. So, where do we want this US-Japan pact to go? I think... I think I do just take South Korea. And then, like, they actually can't really degrade DEFCON. So, if they move into Thailand, we get to coup it. So, I think 
not degrading DEFCON here is actually pretty good. Let's just go with that. Um, and then we'll play containment. I mean, we might take India if they don't. But I think we're more likely to play... And so NASA's out of the way, we could play to Israel. We could just coup Lebanon with containment. Like, it's not actually the worst. Um, oh, they had the Middle East going. Okay. So they took the four points. Um, so now what do we want to play? I mean, playing into India is okay. They have to have exactly the war. I mean, they have been playing a lot of... They have been spending a lot of time playing around Afghanistan and Pakistan, which kind of indicates that they probably do have the war, but at the same time, I think this gives us a pretty good shot um, of getting to Thailand. I actually like, think it's the most valuable place for us to play at the moment. I mean, they could break North Korea here, but yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take a punt. If they've got the war, they've got the war. Could have gone into Israel. Um, or could have taken some more countries in Europe, but I don't think Europe was the right play. I think we had to do something in Asia. And we have limited options for where we could play in Asia. We could break them in Pakistan, which maybe was better. But I think if they have the war evening up Pakistan there, it's just also not great because then we actually lose our uh, foothold in the region at all, really, if they succeed on the war, whereas this way, Pakistan's still flippable. Okay, so they have blockade. Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe that containment was exactly what they needed. No, they were always planning on getting rid of soccer. Fair enough. Um, so now a pretty bad um, hand for us in terms of ops. Uh, but we do have the war, so that's good. Uh, it means we're a little bit safer in India. I think we'll headline CNS still. There's not really a lot that's going to give us tempo uh, coming out of the headline phase elsewhere in our hand. So we'll just go ahead and headline that. Um, the uh, Our only three opt to coup is a five-year plan. Um, we get two coups here, though, probably, because they can't... They still can't degrade DEFCON, which is pretty funny. Uh, headline East European Unrest. Okay, so maybe they've got um, Europe scoring, which is a bit awkward. Uh, except that they still can't degrade DEFCON. Oh, they can coup India or one of our other Asian battlegrounds if DEFCON's at four. So probably want to be a little careful of that. Hmm... That would have been a reason to take Spain or Portugal next turn, actually. Uh, last turn, I should say, rather than taking India. But I think taking India has put us in a better position anyway. Um, so we're going to, I think, break Pakistan. We're not going to risk the five-year plan now that... Oh, we actually, we can, because we can play into Austria... Uh, that's actually pretty bad. So what I was going to say is like we could play into Austria, fill it up, and then um, break them in Pakistan, but that gives them a pretty good coup target in Pakistan, actually. Um, Casey is subscribed with the resub. Thank you very much. Um, I hope I do got this. It's a good start. It's a good start. We've just got to build on it. Um, yep, so the war is good because it's defensive on India, but it's really not helping us be aggressive in Pakistan at all. Um, so we can UN intervention, five year plan, and put one into Austria and break Pakistan. But again, it leaves us in largely the same situation. Um, the other option is to put one into Austria with one of our two ops. Say so play uh, independent reds and go like this and try to get closer to Thailand. But it's still not great because we need to flip back one of these um, battleground countries. I guess we could flip Pakistan with the China card if they cooed. 
and failed, but if they could and succeeded, it would be pretty catastrophic. But I don't think we want to give up these Europe victory points at this point for domination. So if they want to coup, then we'll probably just let that happen. Yeah, because I don't think there's a way that we can secure domination and make it less advantageous for them to coup here. So let's just get with that. That EU was a little bit of a spanner in the works of our whole DEF CON plan. That was a good headline from them. Like they may be bluffing, they may not have their Europe scoring card at all. And maybe we should have just cooed Thailand there. Um, independent raids out of the way it stops the Romanian application shenanigans from happening this turn if we were to, if they were to play Romanian first and then we play independent raids and then have to play Truman so good to get that out of the hand now but presumably they've got a couple of things that they have to deal with here and the fact that we got CNS and got ahead in space early means it's less likely they're going to be able to dump heaps of stuff. So they got rid of Blockade and SockGov last turn. We had um, NASA. Do we have any other good red events? Not really. We just got lucky getting a lot of good neutral events. They just played the two threes. So there's still um, De Gaulle and Suez both out there and um, both D-Style and Decol. So chances are they've got something reasonably good for us in their hand. Okay, Fidel and a coup, I presume. No, okay, just playing in Southeast Asia. Well, all that consternation over potentially giving them the coup turned to nothing. Uh, so I think we'll just coup Thailand. Um, do we do it with the China card? I mean, CIA is out of the game now and um, Formosan's in effect. I'm pretty keen to just lock in Thailand um, and lock in this part of Southeast Asia. The other option, obviously, is to coup with 5U plan and hope that we don't roll a 1, um, a 2, or a 3, or a 4. So, like, we need 5 plus to take Thailand at that point. Um, yeah, I'm just going to... Uh, I don't mind cooing Thailand with the China card early. Well, <clears throat> I guess rolling a 1 even with the China card is not great, and it's worse because you lose the China card. Hmm... <clears throat> That's all right. Hopefully they've still got Europe scoring. <laughs> and we're not in a terrible position in, um, in Asia because of the three battlegrounds that we currently have. Um, and the fact that we may actually hold the war through now to next turn, if we can. Let's see, 5 plan is going to reduce our hand size whether we play UN Intervention or whether we play Truman Doctrine. Um, so I think we'll probably just UN Intervention it, but we'll see how we go. Suez Crisis, okay. Uh, so now we get to coup Egypt if we want here. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty happy to do that. I think it's... Probably better than Queen Panama because Middle East might get scored again next turn. So let's do that and then because it allows us to control our hand a bit better to use your intervention here. So we'll do that. Uh, coup. And another poor roll, but we should get back into that area first with um, with NASA, hopefully, if it comes back around early enough. If it comes back around next turn, most likely. Um, otherwise, there's obviously Sadat and other things which can get our opponent in there. Um, so now we've got three ARs left and we'll hold Indo-Pakistan anymore, so we'll play these. Don't need a Milops. Uh, or rather, we're ahead on Milops, so we should be getting some Milops VPs, hopefully. Not sending anything to space. Truman Doctrine is not a huge threat at the moment. Although we probably do want to overprotect France. 
Okay, so they're going for some Mediterranean shenanigans. So we might not overprotect France now, we might just look to take Spain, but it's going to take us a couple of action rounds to do that. And fighting for it under Truman Doctrine is a little questionable, but um, let's at least try and make some progress, I think, while we do it. Actually, I, th I think they do have Europe scoring. I don't know. It's not definite, but we don't want to give them the easy out to even up country count here. So we'll do it this way. If they respond there, then we might give up on it and just take Bulgaria um, for country count. And then if they finish that off, then we can just take um, Lao with Truman Doctrine. By the way, I mean, it's going to be hard for them. We've got five countries already and we can take Bulgaria in one action round either way. Um, okay, well, there's our France over protection. They're going for Asia domination. Yeah, that's awkward actually, isn't it? Um, okay, well, we'll go like this. is not going to even things up. Three, four, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're not evening things up there. They've got two ARs left. Um, so I think we'll just take Spain for the long term, and then I think we'll take Lao also to give ourselves a bit more control in this area in the longer term. And then next AR, like we could have broken Pakistan there, it's true, but that leaves our Truman Doctrine being a lot worse for us given that we left Spain, Portugal unfilled um, and breaking with a two up card is just not, not ideal. Yeah, so that's pretty unfortunate. I don't, not gonna lie, do not love that. Um, let's just go ahead and place this in, um, do you want Burma or L? or Algeria here. I think are our two main options. Israel is also an option, but less advantageous. Um, so if we to fill these up, it's four, five, six, and if we get decal, then we get to go seven, maybe an eighth to flip, I think. Let's go like that. Like they haven't even got access to Algeria. We don't want to give them the coup capability. So let's just keep filling up Asian countries. So we've held the war, which should make India safe through the mid war, hopefully, but that was a pretty unfortunate turn. Like obviously rolling one on the China card to China card coup, um, completely changed the dynamic because had we succeeded on that coup, we would have been in a really good position to force domination, uh, back on them. But we did not get there because at that point they didn't have Taiwan. So they would have been one, two, three, four, uh, five, six to our one, two, I don't know, one, two, three, four. So we could have forced Burma, Lao and Vietnam if we had succeeded on that coup, but that's okay. Okay. So we get Vietnam now. They're trying to even things up in Europe bring back a couple of VPs. So unfortunate for us that Europe scoring didn't come out to now. They've got D. Cole, they've got um, on the blue side. I think we've seen most of the blue events actually. Um, so Asia scoring again here. We can't do much with D style into Asia. We can headline IP war for a six plus, but that's pretty bad. We can also coup Iran and then um, we're not going to headline Europe scoring into a um, defectors. We could headline nuclear test ban um, and then try and realign them out of West Germany. Don't hate that actually. Like if they don't have defectors, then that's pretty much game over. 
I mean, they could go... So we realign them out of West Germany. They play to Benelux. We don't have a four-op to take. Uh, West Germany is the problem at that point. Um, so then they've then it's just an ops race. And I'm not sure that we win the ops race. Like, we just don't know. Uh, they can also coup Italy. Yeah, I think that's probably too risky. Um, instead, let us just headline. I'm not gonna headline D style. Don't. Are we gonna change this? Is the question, or do we unfortunately just need to cop that and then try and make it up here? Hmm. All we need to do is eat into one battleground and or get them to play the China card in order for Asia scoring to be back to neutral. So I don't think we can afford to headline Asia scoring. It's just, th there's too many possibilities for us to counterplay there. We could headline Indo-Pakistani war and go for the one in six. Yeah, that is true. But just careful because um, it's a um, tournament game. So don't want to... Uh, give too many hints or give any hints because I shouldn't be getting help from chat, but that's okay. Thank you. That's very kind. Um, uh, headlining Korean war is not great. Yeah, I'm not convinced that we're going to win the Ops race to West Germany. So even if we do headline test ban, realign with duck and cover, we've only then got one three up plus D style as another possible three up and then two up cards, which I don't think is going to be enough for us to win to overcome whatever their likely average ops is in their hand. Especially with so many red events already removed, there's so little that is, that is literally unplayable for them. We could be getting red scared here. If we're getting red scared here, it's not great. If we're getting red scared, we definitely don't want a headline test ban. I think we just go for the one in six. Why not? Well, it's defectors anyway, so good that we didn't have like Europe scoring. So let's, um, or test ban for that matter. So let's now coup with test ban on, well, we've already got rid of our war. That was probably silly because that was, um, something that we could have made better with the Iran coup. Hmm. Probably should have just headlined Korean war since it was much of a muchness. Um... I think we still coup Iran, although they don't really have any attractive coup targets. So we can kind of just coup later in the turn. And we can just use um, nuclear test ban to play into Thailand instead. Like, is that the way to go? Nah, I think we try and flush out some of their better ops cards elsewhere on the board first. So let's just score this and see what comes from them. Although, what like what's likely to come? So they can't flip... They can play the China card into North Korea or South Korea. We can space this. We can... Yeah, I just want to get this out of the way so that we can play East European Unrest as well. <clears throat> without worrying too much about that Austrian influence. So we know they've got Romanian abdication. We know they've got decolonization. Um, and yes, we knew they had NATO. I forgot to count the four ops. Okay. Well, now this makes cooing around a little more important um, or cooing Lebanon. Actually, I think I'm just gonna coo Lebanon here as a first up play. Let's do that. Should 
should have done that on turn one, talked about it, and then decided to hone in on Europe instead, which turned out to be terrible because it only got scored once. Coming us back in Syria. Fair enough. Uh, don't really want to fill up Syria because I've already got access to Jordan anyway, so it's not in fact it makes no difference, really. Um, us going into Jordan also doesn't make much difference. I mean, they have Arab Israeli war, is the other thing. I don't think we've seen AI war yet so far, so they almost certainly have that in hand. Um, and they can't really degrade DEFCON, save cooing a. Cuba. I can't see AI war here anyway. Don't remember it being played, no. So this is pretty risky for them now. Having this foreign influence sitting in Israel. So that we've got NASA, uh, sorry, not NASA, um, Romanian abdication, AI war, and uh, decol as three of their five cards. So I think we flushed out some good ones there. We're getting closer to the point where I want to poke these Asian battlegrounds. Um, but I think we'll give it one more action round before we do that. So maybe I'll, I don't really want to spend one of my good plays yet. I mean, I don't really want them to remain in abdication before I EU either. So I'm a little bit torn on that, but I kind of want to keep this as follow up. Uh, actually, Do I want to destyle before playing EU? Not really, because that gives me less control over where I leave remaining ops in Eastern Europe. Okay. We also don't want to destyle while DEFCON is at three, because we want to. DEFCON at three is keeping them out of Egypt. So let's just go ahead and space dive and cover now. I think. Unfortunate failure. We're going to get a decal space probably here, I imagine. Or they may play into Jordan with Arab-Israeli war. Perhaps us playing into Jordan was actually the way to go there, because since we know they have our war, yeah, that was probably the right play. It was probably AEU2 into Jordan. Should have done that. Ah, played the China card. Perfecto. Hopefully this doesn't go into Asia. No. Very good. So now we get to score Asia more favorably, and we still get to coup Egypt here. Which means they get to score uh, Middle East for domination, but um, we get to f hopefully roll well. Come on. Well, would have been nice to get that extra VP. Um, but at least we've evened up Asia, that's the important thing. And got to a point where they have to overprotect in order to protect in order to protect their Asian battlegrounds as well. So we're in a position where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight we can't dominate them anyway really like we could break one of their countries they go to seven but we still don't have indonesia so it's a bit awkward um all right well we're not gonna take we're not gonna worry about egypt or libya i think we will um we've only got two hours left so we're gonna have to hold d style for next turn i think which is fine because we don't want to get headline voice of america out we just don't have time to fill it up now um I mean, they could still headline Voice of America next time. So the options for us are to... Maybe we can hold East European Unrest, actually. Like, we could play East European Unrest now, but that makes places to desalinize out of much worse. Um, knowing that they have decol and that they want to space decol, they have Romanian and Arab-Israeli war. They, don't, they probably don't want to play Arab-Israeli war. So what have they got? Four cards left. They get to hold two cards is the annoying thing. So they're probably going to try and hold AI War and or Decol or space one of them. Um, actually, I think this is a pretty good...
place to poke Thailand maybe. I mean, it only gets us one VP, like it doesn't get us to domination for the reasons we discussed earlier, but the VP is helpful. Um, the other options are to play like into Algeria um, or into Libya, which is not a good option or to just play Asia scoring now. Yeah, like there, there's a chance now that they won't be able to fill that up for over two action rounds, given how bad some of the cards in their hand are, or they'll choose to do that and prioritize that. Um, and then hold worse cards into next turn, which is also okay for us. So it didn't work out ideally, given how strong our start was in Europe, but I, I think that can always happen with Europe as either side, because it's so scoring card dependent. Um, and because the countries in Europe are quite high stability, it takes a lot of operations for you to really like consolidate a lead there. Uh, and because there are a lot of early war events that affect the region as well, it can be quite swingy, whereas you kind of need to dedicate time and effort to spreading in Asia if you don't get the right events. And we didn't get decal, unfortunately. I mean, we could have used D-Style to take Indonesia, I guess, but... Okay, well, this is interesting. Let's go, 4+. plus. Oh, no, because they control Israel. Yeah, it's 5, and it's 1 for Syria. Forget about that. That's not nearly as bad for them. I was like, wait, 5, surely that's a success. No, incorrect. Okay. Yeah, I forgot... I always forget about Arab-Israeli war and controlling Israel. Mmm... And there goes the space decal. Okay. Well, at least Thailand's in a place where we can flip it with, um, well, this is a very good hand, by the way, uh, where we can flip it with the China card. OPEC not looking so strong at the moment. Um, however, Brushwell Thailand does look pretty good. Does look pretty good. It's only a four plus, but uh, yeah, let's go Junta Ku Panama, I think. So we'll probably put two in Venezuela, Ku Panama. Got a couple of problematic US events to deal with, but we can just deal with them towards the end of the turn, space this and the other two are able to be dealt with. So yeah, pretty strong hand. Might try and pick up some BPs with OPEC if we can. But that's gonna be a bit challenging given how the Middle East looks. We definitely want to play into Libya because we don't want the option to be on the table for them to control the Middle East at some point. Hmm, okay. That makes things a little worse, but not too much worse, thankfully. Given that we get to do this. No, oh, cleaning them out is, is helpful. Yeah, it makes things a little worse, mainly in terms of these cards and how we deal with them, because it probably means we have to hold public governments rather than being able to space it. We can do a China card, take back the China card play if we really want to. Uh, just to try and secure things a bit better, but you know, we're gonna be eventing D style, so it's not all too bad. So what are we going to do? It's going to make, yeah, turning your three ups into two ups. When you have a handful of three ups, you can actually feel like, oh, I'm going to get some tempo out of this turn. I'm going to do some positive things. And when they all suddenly become two ups and your two ups become ones, you're just like, ugh. The good thing is that there's a couple of things we want to advance. The bad thing is that um, we wanted to spread a little bit before we invented OPEC. So I think we'll 
we could play destalinization here and just take the three from Austria, although I do kind of like having those there, to be honest. Um, maybe we don't need the two in... Where do we not need them? Oh, Lebanon. What am I doing? I'm just taking it from Lebanon. Okay. Uh, one, two... You can probably even take another one. One, two, three. And then do we take the Yugoslavia one? Maybe not. We could do it the other way around and take it out of um, Thailand after we brush ward there. Um, yeah, I don't want to take out of Vietnam because I don't want them to just randomly flip it for, for brush war insurance either. One, two, three don't want them to be able to flip Lebanon. I think we're okay on Europe country count to take Bulgaria. Uh, so, okay, one, two, um, I think three, four. Like if they've got Voice of America and they get to wipe us out from South America, that's pretty bad. Maybe we don't need to d straight up. Hmm. Ah, so annoying. All right, let's just. Use cultural revolution to go like this, so we can at least finish Algeria. I think Algeria is less of a priority than Lebanon. Sorry, than um Libya. Let's just do that so that we don't get sedated out of there. Anyway, sorry, that took way too long to think that through. I really want to flip Thailand for this Southeast Asia scoring. And it's annoying that we now don't have two chances to do it. Because when we had China card or Brush War, it felt a lot better. Well, maybe we'll just play Camp David Accord since we have to play it at some point in the turn. Might as well do it now. Ugh, locks us out of Saudi Arabia pretty badly. Potentially. I'm feeling nervous about the Middle East in the long term, but we've just got to keep the pressure up on our opponent elsewhere on the board, I think. Like, if they have ABM here, it's like, ugh. But we've had... Certainly the cards go our way this turn and one of the turns in the early war as well. They went, I think, turn one. We had a pretty good hand and having Hunter and Brush War this turn is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, obviously being red scared is not ideal. So OPEC currently worth two VPs. At least that's something that we can think about. And I think we can destyle next action round, although I might just Brush War Thailand, to be honest, just to see how that turns out before we pull the trigger on destyle. Okay. Well, we can move to control here almost now. So by the end of the turn, so we might not play OPEC. Uh, let's just do this and see how it turns out. Actually, is that still the best option for us? Um, it is better than anything else on the board, I think, at a four plus, come on. Yes, all right, that's a big one. Ooh, happy about that. I just didn't want them to get in and flip Lao in anticipation. Like, you know, you guys know from watching a few of my games how much I sit there like, oh, can't let Thailand be brush warable, can't let Thailand be brush warable. I don't often act on it that early, but there's a chance that they might flip Lao randomly. Okay, looks like their hand's not great. We'll hold the Southeast Asia scoring for the moment and we'll just go ahead and try and... Yeah, rolling that six was, that was a good feeling. One, two, three, 
at four, same plan, and we'll go one, two, three, because we don't need so much access now. Uh, and I think we'll just fill up Chile so we can't get Voice of America there. Um, that is probably the plan. That feels pretty bad. Maybe we fill up Chile first. So maybe we go, although we don't want them playing into Angola. Hmm. Yeah, I think we need to block off Angola. One, two, three. I keep going back and forth on this. It's just, I'm so scared of Voice of America for some reason. Um, we have no way to get back into this region and no way to get back into this region if they get us. So I actually think we have to do it like, that's so awkward going three into Venezuela, but sometimes I guess you got to do what you got to do. And we do have other ways to get into Mexico with liberation theology. So I'm just going to do it this way because they know we have desal as a thing. So if they had Voice of America, they just wait and they try and get us with Allende. They're like, sure, you can have Allende and I'm still going to wipe you out somewhere with Voice of America. We still get wiped out in Africa, but like you can't avoid every good Voice of America. It's a good card. Um, and this should hopefully solidify Thailand for the foreseeable future as well, which helps us in Asia later on. So now the board's looking a lot better like that. That brush war in Thailand was actually so critical because it flipped a continent that's difficult to flip while we have the China card in hand, crucially, so we can be a little more assured of being safer in the Koreas. Um, and we're now ahead in the rest of the board. Okay, so on negotiations, eventing for brush war. Looking to flip Libya maybe for Middle East control? Or Venezuela? Um, not a terrible hand to be purged with, that is true. So we'll take um, Brazil, I think here, and I mean, we're not gonna coup. Um, but yeah, salt was pretty good for them there. Like that salting for brush war was good because they want to be cooing. Um, I guess we could play nuclear subs here. Actually, nuclear subs would be amazing because <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> then they can't avoid DEFCON going up to five next turn and us realigning West Germany. Okay, I'm totally doing that. Um, all right, I'm gonna go nuclear subs into Brazil, I think. Yeah, let's see how this turns out. We might get our dream of the the West German situation, although they might obviously they have time to see it coming and they might go into Benelux. But we'll see how we go. I mean, we can still get them if we get some way to realign in the headline phase. And then a four up, which we have in the China card to take West Germany. That would be fun. Oh, they've chosen Italy. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should have put the one into Austria, but still, like, come on. All right. Uh, well, that's annoying. Um... Now we just spread, cool. All right, um, one into Zaire to make their coups a little worse. And um, we are we gonna place any more influence? We're not gonna place any more influence, so we'll just put the one into Austria now um, for the purposes of the realignment anyway on West Germany, which we're gonna do if they don't play into Benelux. I'll probably realign Italy too. Um, and then we'll pop this Southeast Asia scoring next. Carrying over puppet governments is a bit awkward, but it's also fine because it means we can space it next turn. It's just such a bad event to play at this point when they have no influence anywhere in the mid-war countries. So let's take back a few VPs and see how we go. Yeah, not too bad a hand to be purged with. 
So, I mean, it's, it's a lot to ask to draw ABM next turn, but drawing ABM next turn would be sweet. So there's that Romanian abdication that they've been holding on to. Getting presence in South Africa and giving us Romania. So, is NASA out? Yes, I played it it's not out of the deck. I played it headline turn one and it has not come back since then. It got defectors. So it's around. Did they play Sadat that turn? I think they did, didn't they? Yeah. Not for the event though, obviously. Um, so a pretty bad hand, but we can get away with a, well, we did get away to potentially um, die in the headline phase, but also a way to potentially realign in the headline phase. Um, but actually we can't die because Defcon's at five. So maybe we just um, headline missile NV, hope that we hit something great and then get to headline. There's no other way, sorry, get to realign. There's no other way we get to realign here, is there? Um, Flower power doesn't do it. Shot of blown No, no, the blue cards obviously do it. All right. And we've got a couple of VPs here from Central America scoring too. But let's just go ahead and try out this. So the only way we could die here is if they've got How I Learned headline and then we hit We Will Bury You. That's pretty bad. I, I still don't want to do that. I still don't want to take that risk not knowing where We Will Bury You is. And we haven't seen How I Learned or We Will Bury You. So yeah, I, as nice as that idea is, I just don't think we can take the risk. So let's just headline Central America scoring. I believe the other option is to play to Haiti and Nicaragua, but I think I'm just happy to take the three VPs at this point. Well, we, we would have got away with it. Hopefully we don't lose too many scoring cards here. But these could be some good realigns. We're going to use, do we use flower power is the question. I think... <laughs> So we're at plus two in both West Germany and Italy. NASA, Liberation Theology, South Africa Unrest, Olympic Games, Kitchen Debates. Hmm, interesting, okay. Um, I think we want the extra rail line. So I think we do flower power. Hopefully they drew South America or Africa scoring, by the way, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I think we want the extra relay, so we just want to make use of this while we can. One, two, three, four. All right. That worked out reasonably. Good to get uh, West Germany all out in the first roll. Don't want to complain about the remaining rolls because it could have gone a lot worse, but um, yeah, it would have been nice to have a spare realignment roll to make um, elsewhere on the board, but that's okay. So we've now got, because they chose to overprotect Italy rather than playing to Benelux, we've now got the luxury of not having to play the China card here. So... Let's go like that, I think. Uh, we don't even need to play three into there, to be honest. Um, let's just play one, two. Um, Where's gaining us tempo though, elsewhere on the board? Somewhere adjacent to Nigeria is okay, so they can't get us out of there. Nigeria is not great. Adjacency to Nigeria is like a bit meh. 
Like we do want to degrade DEFCON. We want to space these to this turn ideally. Hold this. So like we've got a pretty bad rest of our hand because Shadow Diplomacy is actually really bad for us as well. Um, so we want to think pretty carefully about what we do here. I think Algeria is okay. Like it's a... <clears throat> But is it more important? We don't want to go into Argentina because we don't want to give them in there. Overprotecting Brazil kind of sucks. So, don't want to miss Lenvy because it's just so uncertain. Like, we can just hit arms race and just have a blank action round. It's just... It could be terrible. Um, yeah, killing Italy is like... Killing Italy is okay. Don't want to give away the China card to do it. Um, so could do it with U2 Incident. The problem is that we maybe we lose both by doing that. Um, so like maybe we lose West Germany and Italy because if we coup Italy with this or this roll terribly like roll a one um, then they move into Benelux then we don't have the ops to be able to retake West Germany and or we have to spend the China card and otherwise we wouldn't um, so I think I'd probably rather just do this knowing that they have to coup and that we can just kind of counter coup wherever they coup I think that's okay. Yeah, Miss Lenby. Uh, there's just. Yeah, Reline Italy again was um, probably the play. Could have gone Reline Italy again and um, them Reline surrounding countries. Could have even realigned them out of the UK if we got lucky. And that's the other thing about eventing um, Missile Envy is you don't know if you're just going to like degrade DEFCON and not get anything for it. Like still if we hit we will bury you it's pretty bad. Like it's just, it's three VPs but it just doesn't get us anywhere. But yeah, probably using a three up to realign Italy would have been okay but I mean even then we are a little lacking on ops to be able to fight them to take both battlegrounds. Like, unless we realign them out of Italy and all the adjacent countries, which is actually impossible off a three-up card, the chances of us being able to retake Italy and um, take West Germany are pretty low with our hand as it is. So I think I'd rather just consolidate for now. Like... Our gambit this turn has cost us exactly one flower power and one U2 incident to force them to to flip a battleground in Europe, which is hard to do anyway, um, and to force them to do uh, quite a lot in response and spend a lot of ops. So uh, this is useless. So yeah, I think it's turned out okay. We're not going to play this missile envy, so I'm just going to use it to finish this. Um... Although, I mean, now they're giving us the opportunity, like they haven't degraded DEFCON. Maybe we do. Just realign again. The problem is now they have adjacency. Um, I think there are still some blanks. I'm just trying to think like whether there are blank threes and fours for us. Like We Will Bury You is still a blank and it's really bad for us if we hit it here. Um, I'm just deciding between whether realigning is better. I think realigning though is not better. Um, take Greece when you can for future early rush. Sorry guys, um, I should have said earlier <laughs> just no trying to keep hints and like discussion in the chat to a minimum just for our opponent like etiquette because it's a tournament game but thank you i really i appreciate the enthusiasm very much um so um yeah i i still think that finishing off um west germany is better here than realigning because 
even if we're successful in relining, if, if we're unsuccessful, it's obviously catastrophic. Even if we're successful in relining Italy, we're not going to get them out of Benelux. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm just going to do it this way because um, I'm probably running a little short on time now. I should, I've only got 19 minutes to do five turns. But yeah, I think that's the way to go. And we'll just keep the pressure up in the mid war regions now. And we've got some, depending on where they coup and like how good their hand is in terms of ops, if they just try and coup one-up countries, that's probably to the advantage of us with the way that our hand is. Um, but let's see. Like they're almost certainly going to coup now. I don't really know why they took Mexico there. So they did have We Will Bury You, so that would have been pretty bad for us because we would have, I mean, we would have hit it and got it out of their hand, but um, we wouldn't have got any realignments out of it if we'd played Miss Lenby. Um, it's also good that we didn't headline Miss Lenby for that reason. So with DEFCON now at three, we get to coup. Uh, so we'll just coup somewhere in the Middle East, I think. Um, do we coup around or do we coup? I think cooing Mexico is still better in the long game, even though the scoring card's out for now. All oh, right. Yeah, so we played around the way we'll bury you with the missile envy there, which was good. Could have been glorious if they didn't have it, but Arms Race and We Will Bury You were the two exact cards that were bad for us if they had. And they had both of them. Having both of them makes Arms Race not so bad because they have to give us We Will Bury You, but still not great. Um, eventing JP. That's three BPs for us, and let's repair there. Um, pretty awkward. I mean, we can bear trap ourselves. Um, don't love that. We're going to have to give them Panama Canal this turn, so we might as well give it to them now. It means we don't get to retake Mexico, but we're just not playing either of the other two cards, so let's just go with that. And we really have to get the speed up. So now only Africa and South America remain to be scored in the mid war, and we have no more playable ops this turn, so a boo hoo to that. Which is kind of awkward because we're not exactly in the place that we want to be in the mid war regions, considering the lead we had at the start of the turn. They also had how I learned <laughs> all of the cards that I discussed that it would be bad for them to have. Uh, and they had them. Good that we succeeded on the first base, because that means we don't have to eat puppet governments or bear trap. <laughs> Spacing Quagmire. Uh, we'll space the bear trap, I think. Because puppet governments is getting to the point where it's not as good. Uh, now we'll just get out of here. Let's pass that. Uh, Would have liked those VPs. So it looks like they asked. I mean, they asked nodded pretty greedily. Like they got rid of kitchen debates and Olympic games. I think, which you can definitely have worse cards in your hand than those as the US. Obviously, you can have better ones, but you can have worse ones. And they asked nodded into an okay hand. Like they've had a few decent things going their way. So I think, yeah, we should really just rush through the next few turns because aside from the Middle East, which is a little bit of a problem for us in that it's a potential source of good VPs for them, uh, we're looking in decent shape in the rest of the regions on the board with a strong stranglehold in Europe, which means we're in an okay spot for final scoring, I think. Um, okay, Africa and South America scoring in our hand is really good. 
uh, Brezhnev Doctrine this turn I think will be great. Um, Portuguese Empire crumbles doesn't really matter. So let's just go with Brezhnev Doctrine and we get to UN Intervention something. Okay. So they get Africa scoring. That's okay. That is okay. Can deal with that. Because now our like CMC's a four up, Latin American Death Squads is a three up. This could be a very good turn for us. Like we get to Okay, the Queen is Zaya, fair enough. Well now we get to like just Go okay, one, two, three, four. Um, and I think at that point it looks pretty good for Africa domination. And then we should be able to also force, hopefully, South America domination with Uruguay. Obviously, coups dependent, but if we can score domination in both of these regions this turn, it'll be good. They could have ABM and us in Angola or something would be awkward. Because we're then behind on country count. But short of that, I think we're okay. Nixon, we're probably, oh, okay. Well, yeah, Colonial Red Guards works as well. Uh, so do we cop the rail lines on Nigeria? Yeah, I think we do. I think we just do the old um, UN intervention bear trap, place one, two, three, four. Um, Ah, oh, that doesn't give us domination supremely awkwardly because they just have so many countries now. I mean, we can flip Southeast African states with Portuguese Empire crumbles, but I think we'd rather coup. Um, but we just can't afford to give them domination. So I think we have to do it that way. So let's go one, two, three, four. Yeah. Let's just do that and try and force our way back to domination. It's annoying that they both found out about Afri Africa scoring and had rear guards this turn. Good hand for them, but not much we can do about that. And we're still in decent shape with the number of ops. We don't have heaps of playable ops and we've got two scoring cards, but we have some. We didn't, we played Culture Revolution, didn't we? Yeah, so it's still around, oh, okay. Interesting. Just choosing not to coup the battleground. Um, so now we get to coup uh, with Latin American death squads on Cameroon if we want. And that would take us to one, two, three, four, five, to one, two, three, four, five. But they can just put one in Ivory Coast. But I still think that's the way to go. Um, Is it though? So we could go. Yeah, I think it is the way to go because we need Milops anyway. So let's do that. Ku Cameroon. And then we can try and realign next turn, but that leaves us with enough time. We still have enough time to fill up um, South America, but it's close. Ugh, so annoying. Well, we'll just cash in this one BP, I think, at this point, and then turn our attention to South America. That could have gone atrociously for them if they'd rolled a one there. Um, cool. 
two, three. So they now get to Ku Columbia and maybe have positive realigns of Venezuela, but I get the feeling they want to, they're desperate to space something here. Who knows? Maybe this was a little risky. Maybe we could have just taken it a bit slower and gone into Uruguay instead. Because Colombia is almost a dead set to realign out of, uh, sorry, to coup out of. But let's see. We'll see whether they have the appropriate card to coup with. They do not. Very good. Well, they took those VPs off us, but we got some others. So that was like, this has been like a one minute turn. So made up a little bit of time here. Um, very good. Well, that's all a little bit too late. So now we get to play the China card. The thing is, do we want to flip Pakistan with it? Um, or do we want to like do some other things elsewhere on the board and go like one, two, three. Uh, I guess we don't need to play the China card. We can just space Nixon. I thought we had two action rounds left. We've only got one. Okay. Let's just space Nixon. As annoying as it is, we'll just hold on to that. So yeah, they get to flip Argentina here after South America's already been scored. I think that's okay. We can just coup it back next turn. And we haven't filled out Mexico, which we would like to do. But they had a far higher ops turn than us this turn. And they gave us flower power, which could be worth a couple of VPs over the remainder of the game. Yeah, I think the big issue for them was they could have flipped Africa control, sorry, Africa domination if they just cooed with ABM treaty on the battleground instead. Um, so we can decol, we've got decol liberation theology, all these kinds are good, and we've got defectors. So I just want to take a moment to think about this. I think we just want to red scare them though. Um, uh, or maybe we want to hold it. The other option is to how I learned in the headline phase and then to realign Italy or to coup Italy. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Uh, how, li how I learned and then coup Italy. It does make, like obviously they then get a lot of other coups as DEFCON comes back down. They only get one. Yeah, let's do that. Let's how I learned and coup Italy. Uh, we also, I think, want to flip Pakistan with the China card and play decal to take Indonesia this turn and then try and dominate Asia. Uh, we could also set DEFCON to 4 with How I Learned and then coup Pakistan only instead of worrying about Italy. I think that's also okay, although the war is back in. Um, so we're one battleground down, which means we go to 1, 2, 3, 4 to their 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Yeah, so we would dominate if we flipped a battleground. Would we dominate if we just decoled? Let's see. One, two, three to one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we would. Okay. I think we just headline decol then. Short on time, but I think we've mathed this out correctly. So now we get to Asia scoring. Hydrate. Oh no, I'm out of water. Oh, we're in here. Oof. There it is. Thank you, Mithrin. I'm feeling the time pressure. I took far too long thinking about all those Europe shenanigans. And this is a very good hand, so there were just like so many different options. I think we spent enough time trying to jam them in Europe that I'll probably give up on that now. Oh, what? How, how have I stuffed this up? I've stuffed up my math somehow. Okay, not too badly. That's good. I was like, have I stuffed up my Battleground Country math? No, I did not. Uh, one, two... Let's go... Uh, maybe three... Four? Just to make realigning Angola that much worse. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's the way to go. And then we'll just go H of scoring for four. Good. Now OPEC actually becomes a bit of an issue for them as well. Board's looking good, time's not looking quite so good. Um, so we can try and hold how I learned to do the Italy coup next turn if we want to. We also need to remember that we need to get East European unrest out of our hand this turn. Hmm. Okay. Falling behind a little bit there. Um, I think we just space voice of America at this point. Is there anything outstanding? Hmm. I mean, we could force the play in South Africa. Where are we heading this turn? We could play Liberation Theology, it doesn't get us very far. We could flip Zaire with a three up card. We could flip it with a four up card <clears throat> and guarantee that we keep it. I think I actually probably want to do that, but I think I just want to cash in OPEC as well. Um, ugh, so many things that I want to do and I'm not sure the order I want to do them. Let's just cash in OPEC, keep up the pressure. And then we're going to space Voice of America. Yeah, so saw that coming. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> so we can coup them back. But we don't have a great card to do it with. Or we can place one into Brazil also helps us. But I think just eventing Liberation Theology is better. Possibly. No, nah, they don't really care that much about Panama. Ah, uh, maybe they do. Central America's unscored. But Africa and South America looks like aren't going to be scored again for the rest of the game. Yeah, interesting. So we just got to rush through for time here. So did we have a turn 6 reshuffle then? Or are we just going to have a turn 8 reshuffle and then all the... I don't know what's happening with these reshuffles. I think we must have a turn 8 reshuffle. Uh, space, South African Unrest, cool. So we'll take that then with Defectors. <sighs> we'll Space, Voice of America, we'll play East European Unrest and we'll just repair Poland and put some influence elsewhere. Mm, could have done that that action round, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, let's trigger this event.
just trying to keep up a little bit of tempo pressure on them so it's harder for them to realign, really. We're going to have to release the tempo at some point when we space this, but that's okay. And then we might try and flip Zaire last action round, although it looks like Africa is not going to be scored, as we said. So let's space this. Failed, damn it. All right, so they get to see our headline. Right, we really have to race against the clock now because we've only got eight minutes. So we're going to speed run the hell out of this. I still think flipping Zaya is the best use of a four up here. Although maybe just purging the next turn is better. All right, well, we're gonna do this now. And I'm gonna purge them next turn. Culture Revolution VP. That's cool. Didn't get our mill ups, that was silly. Um, all right. I think that's still the way to go here. Oh, maybe we just cash in this, actually. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm gonna five year plan this Middle East scoring. Um, we're going to brush for Italy and we're going to roll a six. I mean, we could have brush for Mexico in the headline phase and then <laughs> Central America scoring. Maybe that would have been better, but, uh, I, I really want to brush for Italy. Ah. <laughs> oh. Solidarity, so rude. That's fine, we will fix that up. One, two, three, um, four. Need to space duck and cover here, which means we have to give them alliance for progress, which is pretty irritating because that's a lot of VPs. So hopefully this brush war is successful. Ah, tear down this wall, how rude. All the Europe events. Well, I guess we'll just play duck and cover. Um, and that means we get to space lines for progress, which is worth more VPs anyway, so that's okay, I guess. Yeah, West Germany did good. I mean, we were at, what, plus two? So... It okay. Could have um, filled up Austria in the last action round last turn instead of going to Nicaragua for that reason, but I honestly didn't think of it. We've also randomly got Ortega here. Eventing Sadat, okay. Cool. Well, let's have a go. Come on. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's on. I think only Chernobyl can stop us now. <laughs> so we just have to play what, like every operations point into European battlegrounds now. <laughs> 
Uh, they could Star Wars uh, Brush War Italy, I guess, so we have to be aware of that. Uh, cool. Are they dead? I think they might be. Oh, we don't want to give them that. Hang on. Ugh. Actually, let's get rid of that. That's up. Uh, so we'll just go one. Oh God, I keep going back to the start of the action round. What am I doing? Place influence, one, two. Okay. That'll do. So how many action rounds do they have left? Are they dead? Four action rounds left. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. Okay, so they're not dead to line government. Is that right? Four action rounds left. How did they improve their hand size? Am I counting? Oh, they've only got four cards left in hand. Right. I'm miscounting. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't understand. Spaced the reformer. Anyway, we'll place here and here. Three cards in hand, three action rounds. Okay. Didn't actually think through whether any of these cards improve DEFCON, but I don't think they do, no. I'm trying to understand this number of cards in their hand. Anyway, we are going to space now. Failure. So they had aims and chose not to go to space. Do they actually have two cards in hand? I mean, I know that's what the game's showing me, but I'm really confused. So they, when they invented Lone, Older James, they had one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Oh no, six is NASA, which they discarded. They had five cards, right, okay, so they did. So why did they event aims then, instead of spacing it? Maybe they were giving up? Hmm, I am unsure. Because they, maybe they didn't, maybe they were just like so scared of Europe that they didn't want to play the reformer. I'm confused. Uh, trigger event. Now Lone Gunman. All right. Maybe they were feeling the time pressure. Maybe they thought they had no way back in Europe. Curious, but whew, glad we got there with five minutes remaining on the clock. Um, I'm also really glad that that brush was succeeded. <laughs> Makes me very happy. All right. Well, viewers, <laughs> I think we might have finally got there. Woohoo! Good game, Hiker Ryan. Made us earn it. Um, apologies, everybody, for the uh, slow play on the <laughs> Europe rail lines earlier on, but uh, it's good to, good to get a win on the board for the It's All, that's for sure. Um. 
yes, well, not not the best game of Twilight Struggle that I've ever played. Uh, certainly a bit rusty around the edges, i.e. not realising that my opponent had Lone Gunman, um, which I did know by the end of the mid-war, but I was just so... Um, so stressed out about time that I forgot to count cards on turn seven, but didn't need to count cards because they aimed, them, aimed themselves, I suppose. Yes, very interesting game. Certainly some things that I could have done better uh, in terms of sequencing in the early war, I think, like put too much effort into Europe and didn't pay enough attention in Thailand, uh, sorry, in Asia and the Middle East. And that coup on Thailand early really hurt. Uh, maybe committing the China card to it was unnecessary since like the foul case of rolling a one was so bad if you kill with a China card compared to if you roll a one using I think five year plan was my other option, you and interventioning five year plan. But anyway, that cost us a, a few VPs early and a bit of tempo, but I think with the destalinization we were able to grind out a little bit of tempo into the mid war. Although our opponent fought back really well, like that turn four getting back the brush wall with salt really um pay dividends for our opponent and that was straight after we played d style and then this turn was really strong for them and they just fought their way back across the whole board so yeah um interesting always fun to try for those europe control plays and we kept ourselves in a position where it was possible for long enough yeah, if USSR takes Italy, USA must take France. Yeah, I think that's one of the lessons out of this game was that we were successful in cooing turn one AR1 on Italy and our opponent chose to go elsewhere um, and leave us with France and Italy on turn one, which meant that we were just one good realign away from taking West Germany. And then I think it was far too long before they moved into Benelux as well, which meant that we were that whole turn ahead so we had the, the tempo and the space to be able to realign action round one rather than having to do it headline AR1. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no France definitely put us in a good position. And by the same token, the no France play meant that on turn one, I put more um, into Europe, which since Europe was only scored once in the early war, looked a bit bad because the way that the scoring balance then turned out, the extra effort they put into Asia instead of playing into France made the rest of the board look good for them but maybe in retrospect yeah even though it didn't pay scoring dividends straight away the fact that we um defended it uh, like established that position and then defended it meant that it was hard for them to win in the long game and i think i probably could have played into the inevitability of that a little bit better um by not getting myself into such a timing pickle towards the end of the game because i think having europe in that position even not control like just having four battlegrounds is such a strong anchor once you get ahead on VPs. Like once we were ahead five, six, seven, uh, we got up to 14 at one point, I think. It makes it pretty hard for your opponent to fight back in final scoring. And we also got ahead in Asia as well with that brush war on Thailand in the mid war. But yeah, anyway, good game. Thanks for watching everyone. And I'll be hopefully back shortly. I'm sure I've got more. I kind of played a whole lot of games in the all at the start and did terribly as you saw. Um, and now I've just been scheduling them with people as the, like, we get an email when there's one month to go before the deadline, um, for the game. So I've just been kind of scheduling when I went, scheduling them when I get that email. Um, so I think I've probably got a couple of other one month deadlines coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, yes. So hopefully I'll have more Itzel games. Otherwise I will definitely be, I, as you can see from this stream here, I'm a little bit out of practice and there's a few things that are just a little bit off. You know, all it takes is being one or two seconds behind or one or two percent off in your thinking and it can affect the whole game so i'll definitely be doing a few more practice streams as well over the next couple of weeks to try and get a bit of that sharpness back <laughs> into the play rather than feeling like i'm half a step behind it's better to feel like you're half a step ahead or one step ahead anyway thanks for watching uh and thanks everyone for chatting sorry that i had to ask people not to comment during the game a couple of times it's never never good to do that but um Never good to have to do that. I don't. I love when people chat and I love interaction. I just um, for tournament games, it's good for our opponent's sake and just for you know sportsmanship not to be getting assistance from the chat. But I really do appreciate everyone engaging with the chat and uh, chatting along. It makes the game a lot more enjoyable for me to have your company. So thank you all for being here, and um, thanks Casius for the resub as well today. Thanks everyone for your support, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.